Hi, I'm Nicola Martin, the Senior Consultant for Primary English and Literacy at LPDS. And with me today, I've got our lovely Louise Baker. Hi, Louise. Hi. Who is also part of the English and Literacy team at LPDS, but also works as a senior leader and English subject leader at a school in Preston. And thanks to Louise, because today she's going to share with us her experiences of a very recent deep dive in reading, which hopefully will give you some pointers and some nuggets which you can start to think about in terms of your school situations. So thank you, Louise. Let's get going. Um, just to start us off, I'm going to tune into the deep dive process. This is taken from Ofsted training um, from a film clip that's available on YouTube all about deep dives. And obviously this, this works for any, any deep dive. We're obviously going to be thinking about reading today, but um, the process is the same with whatever you ever subject you're looking at. So initially the the process starts with that top level conversation, uh, the phone call, where there are lines of inquiry, which will be then followed through the inspection process. Um, once, that, once those have been established, those lines of inquiry are then looked at in detail um, in terms of thinking about testing out that, that theory the, uh, and the judgments that are going to be made in triangulating all the evidence and um, include some of the activities you can see here on the screen such as lesson visits, work scrutinies, talking to pupils, talking to curriculum leaders and teachers and really connecting up all that evidence together to create the judgment at the end. So Louise first of all can you just start to explain for us how the inspection started for you personally? Yeah, thank you, Nicola. So the inspection started for me with that phone call. So as the curriculum leader, um, I was part of the phone call, which was mainly looking at the intent of our curriculum offer um, and our whole school curriculum. But as an English subject leader, it started really on the first day of the inspection. So the first thing that happened was I had a meeting with the lead inspector that lasted around about 45 minutes to an hour, where uh, we um, discuss lots of different points um, concerning our um, provision for the teaching of reading. This was then followed on by some lesson visits. So we went into reception together in year one and year two to um, observe the teaching of phonics. This was then followed on um, by the, the, the lead inspector and I um, watching a familiar adult um, listening to a child read and those children were actually selected from the lowest 20%. So again that was from children in reception in year one, year two and year three this time as well. Um, so we did a joint observation there. We also together observed guided reading across key stage two. And the inspector also then met with some um, children from Key Stage 2 um, to discuss their love of reading um, and, re and their thoughts on reading in general, really. And that was all then finished off with a, a little bit of triangulation. And the lead inspector wanted to meet with the, any of the adults that he had visited in the morning. Um, and he asked them very similar questions to the ones he'd asked me in the morning to triangulate and see that um, they were coming from the same page as me. So that's a brief overview of, of what the uh, deep dive involved for me. OK, thank you, Louise. OK. So when we start looking in more detail at the deep dive in reading and phonics, um, the bullet points here are the areas which are examined. So mm. we're going to just have a look at a couple of these today on our vlog um, and Louise will be able to explain what happened as part of that. And obviously some of them are interlinked anyway. So in terms of your experience, Louise, can you outline what happened when you talked to the lead inspector about your phonics and reading provision? Yeah, OK. So in that initial conversation that we had in the morning, the inspector wanted to find out about our teaching of phonics. So I talked to him about our, our fidelity to letters and sounds. Um, he wanted to understand 
um, when we started our teaching of phonics and we discussed the swift and, and strong start in reception phonics right from the start. Um, he was also interested in how we identified any of those children who maybe weren't keeping up with our um, phonics program um, and what we did about those children. So we discussed our daily um, brief interventions that we run in an afternoon where we've, if through formative as, uh, assessment, the teachers have identified some children who are maybe Maybe just not keeping up with that um, particular sound and then they uh, revisit that in the afternoon. Um, he looked um, carefully at our books, our book provision. He wanted to check that our books were decodable and that they matched our progression um, in our phonics as well. And he did that as well through listening to the TA, uh, or through watching, not listening really, watching the TA with a child reading one-to-one. -one. And he did note there the actual book and the, the sounds progression and noting that they did closely match across. Um, thinking about the phonics as well, he wanted to know if I knew as subject leader what the phonics screening data had been for um, the last three years that had been um, data that was published data. So we discussed that and we looked at the trajectory. So were we on an upward trend or a downward trend or were we staying the same, et cetera? And, um, and in fact, what we would be doing about that. Um, when we were listening to or watching the, T, the TAs, um, or familiar adults reading with a child, and we also discussed our use of Lancashire reading partners, which came into light there, because a lot of our children who are in our lowest 20% do access that programme, which is um, a catch up and keep up programme, really. Um, and so we discussed that, um, how that was taught by to the children, was delivered to the children by TAs who have been trained um, in that particular programme. Um, and we're looking very carefully at, at making sure that there was good progress in that catch-up programme that was being delivered. Great, thanks Louise. Um, just in terms of your adults in school, did, he, mm. did the inspector ask you about your support for your early reading experts? Yes, he did. So when we were discussing Lancashire Reading Partners and I was explaining to him about how the TAs delivering that had had training and um, provided by myself um, for that, he then did ask me about how did we prioritise um, reading experts within school? How did we make sure that anybody who was delivering the teaching of reading um, was up to up to date really with current practice? And um, he wanted to know how I, how I maintained that um, all people teaching reading were trained to the same standard. So that included ECTs, it included anybody that was new to our school, um, any new TAs that came that maybe might have um, come halfway through the year. What did I do to make sure that everybody was up to the same standard? Great, and I bet you did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Okay, so just finally, just to jump into the love of reading, um, can you talk, just talk to us a little bit about some of the aspects that were examined as part of love of reading? Um, definitely. Love of reading, um, the inspector was really um, keen on. He went straight into our library um, and had a look in there to see. He commented to us to say that the, it was well stocked and he liked that there was a wide range of texts available with current authors. So I, I got the feeling that he was up to date on his current authors as well. He commented on our reading areas, reading corners within each classroom and how the love of reading was, was, was very visible within school. But but he also spoke to some children um, across Key Stage 2. He had meetings with them about the love of reading. So he asked them things like, when was the last time they'd been read to by a teacher in school? Um, he asked them what book they were um, reading and the authors that they were reading. And he also went back and said, could they tell him about any other books and authors that they particularly enjoyed? Great. Yeah. I bet he had a lovely time in your well-stocked library. <laughs> okay. So thanks, Louise. Um, obviously, we're not covering every aspect today, but we do realise that this might be something that you're interested in as a school or as a subject leader. So we do have an offer that you might want to take advantage of. Um, and we can offer um, a reading deep dive practice consultancy um, and we can book these from the summer term onwards, either with myself, Louise, or with other members of the English team. And that might be something that you want to tap into. 
So hopefully that's been a little bit useful today. Thanks very, very much, Louise, for your experiences. And obviously you're still smiling, so it was obviously <laughs> a pleasant experience. So thanks, thanks, Louise. And it's bye from me. And it's bye from Louise. Bye. Bye. bye.